Hey friends, Pastor Chris here with today's Gold Nugget from God's Word. Today we're going to be looking at the topic of Mordecai and Esther. That's the title of our stu study today. It's taken out of Esther chapter 2, and then it skips over to chapter number 4. So let's begin reading in Esther chapter 2, verse number 5. It says, in the fortress of Susa, there was a Jewish man named Mordecai, son of Jair, son of Shemi, son of Kish, a Benjamite. Kish had been taken into exile from Jerusalem with the other captives when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon took King Jeconiah of Judah into exile. Mordecai was the legal guardian of his cousin Hadassah, that is Esther. So her name in the Jewish belief was Hadassah, and Esther is her Persian name. Because she had no father or mother, the young woman had a beautiful figure and was extremely good-looking. When her father and mother died, Mordecai had adopted her as his own daughter. So we have those two people. They're the main characters of our our study today is Mordecai and Esther and how he's not only taking taking this young young girl that was um, an orphan and he has adopted her she's his cousin and he's adopted her and he's taken on the role of being her father and she looks at him as if he is a dad they are both Jewish and so, while that was going on, at the same time, we have King Ahasuerus, and he's the king of Persia, at a, a very huge empire at that time. It was a very wealthy area, and they were doing well. And he loved to throw parties. He, he loved having banquets, is what he would call them. And the people would come together, and he would have these leaders, these commanders, all these individuals uh, come together into his home, and they would have these banquets. And it would be loud. I mean, there would be um, drinking and celebrating, uh, folks getting loud. Uh, it would just be um, a party. And so... He was throwing such of a party, uh, a banquet there, and uh, at, at some point during the evening, he decided that he wanted to show off how good-looking his wife was. So he sent for his queen, Queen Vashti. So some eunuchs went to get her and bring her back to the king. It was an order he had made. I want her to come, so you go get her and bring her to me. When they went to get her, she refused. She hated those banquets. She didn't like the loud noise. She didn't like the way the people acted. She definitely uh, did not enjoy the drunkenness and all those things that were going on there. And so she refused. But in refusing, she was disobeying the king. And so what ended up happening is the very next day, when those eunuchs came back, to the king that night and said, she's not going to come. She refuses. He grew angry, so the next day he had her banished. He had her sent out. He divorced her, and she was um, taken out as, as being queen there. She was banished from that. So not long after that period of time, we have the king, and he begins to become lonely. And so he sends his men out, and he's, he's sending them forth to find him a new queen. And so they go out throughout the land, and they're knocking on doors, and they every woman that they find, young woman, that they find that's beautiful and that um, they believe would be pleasing to the king, they would ask that individual to come back with them to um, to be considered the king's new queen. One of the doors they knock, knocked on was Mordecai's door. 
And when they knocked on the door, they met Queen. They met Esther, and they convinced her to come back with them to Persia. But before she left, Mordecai told his adopted daughter, and I'm saying this in layman's terms, but he basically said to her, he said, Honey, we are Jewish, and they are not. Don't ever let them know that you are Jewish, uh, because it would it may not go well with us or with you if uh, if they know that we're Jewish. So, she goes back, and of course, all the women are presented to the king. And Queen Ahasuerus, he chooses Esther to be his queen. She moves there to the palace, and she is there uh, along with, he. I mean, he had a harem of women. and um, But she was there, and... Back in those days, the king, he had this harem, but it's not like she, as his queen, stayed in the same quarters with him all the time. He had his own quarters, and he would send for women, um, or he would send for his queen, and that was his right to do so at that time. And so, during that whole time, She's now his queen, and Esther is there at the palace. Mordecai, though, he's still he's going. He's checking on her. Any of us would do that. If we have a child that we love, adopted or blood, you still love them the same, and just because they've moved away, you don't, you don't stop caring for them. I have three adult children, and I love to hear from them. If I don't hear from them pretty regular, then I call and check on them and see if they're doing okay. Same thing here. He was checking on her regularly. And in the process of checking on her, he was there. And one day he heard two eunuchs plotting to kill the king. And so when they heard, or he heard, them plotting to kill the king, uh, he went and he told on them, and it was found out to be true. Those two men were judged, and um, the, their their life was taken from them. Um, that was their their punishment. So from that point, the king now is looking for someone that he wants to come in to protect him. Um, I don't know why he didn't choose Mordecai to be that person, because Mordecai is the one that turned in the others. But he chose a man named Haman. Haman came into the kingdom. And the thing about him is he he required everybody to bow down to him. I mean, he was really second in command under the king. And so he required everyone to bow down to, bow, bow down to him. There was a day, though, that he came and Mordecai was there, and Mordecai would not bow down to him. Mordecai was Jewish. Mordecai would only bow down to to the Lord, to not another man. And so because of that, from that day forward, Haman wanted to get revenge upon Mordecai for not bowing down to him. So. He launched this plan, Haman did. Haman was this person, like I said, that King Ahasuerus has put in command to protect him. And so Haman, now wanting to get back at Mordecai, finds out Mordecai is Jewish. So he goes to the king and he he tells the king, I think we should have every Jew killed to wipe them out. So Mordecai learns that. And here's what he does. Look at Esther chapter 4 verse 8. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree 
issued in Susa ordering their destruction so that Hathach might show it to Esther. Now, Hathach was assigned to Esther as a servant. He was a eunuch. A eunuch, if, if you don't know that, a eunuch is a man that's been castrated, and they, so they become servants. And um, so anyway, he was assigned to be the king's advisor, but also to look after Esther. So he came and repeated Mordecai's response to Esther. Esther spoke to Athach and commanded him to tell Mordecai. And here's what he commanded her to, him to say. All the royal officials and the people of the royal provinces know that one law applies to every man or woman who approaches the king in the manner in the inner courtyard who had, and has not been summoned. Let me read that again. All the royal officials and the people of the royal provinces know that one law applies to every man or woman who approaches the king in the inner courtyard and who has not been summoned. The death penalty. Unless the king extends the gold scepter allowing that person to live, I've not been summoned to appear before the king for the last 30 days. So Esther's response was reported to Mordecai. Mordecai told the messenger to reply to Esther, don't think that you will escape the fate of all the Jews because you are in the king's palace. If you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will come to the Jewish people from another place, but you and your father's family will be destroyed. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. So Mordecai, he sends this message to Esther through this servant of Esther. Um, and, and he's saying, listen, here's what's going to happen. Haman's launched this plan to kill all the Jewish people. You and I are Jewish, and we need to do something. And I know it's going to be dangerous. Uh, and I know you're going to have to step out on faith like you probably never have before. But it's for the good of all the people. That was an incredible challenge that Mordecai put toward his adopted daughter, that she take this step of faith uh, and trust the Lord. And, and he said it in the very last thing in verse 14. He says, who knows, perhaps you have come to your ro royal position for such a time as this. Um, so her argument was, I'm not allowed to approach him unless I'm summoned, unless I'm called for, unless he sends for me. I can't go to him. It's against the rules. Um, and Mordecai is saying, at a time like this, the rules are out the window. We're trying to save our lives. So verse uh, number 15 says, Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go and assemble all the Jews who can be found in Susa and fast for me. Don't eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my female servants will also fast in the same way. After that, I will go to the king, even if it is against the law. If I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went and he did everything Esther had commanded him. So I love this because Esther is demonstrating her faith in the Lord she sends a message back to her stepdad, or not her stepdad, but her, her dad, and says, um, I got your message, and um, I, I'm going to do this, but I want to be covered in prayer. So would you pray and get people with you there to pray for me? And I'm going to be praying here for God to, to protect me and his will be done. If you read on the rest of the story, what you find is that Esther did go to the king. Breaking the rules, she went, and he accepted her and asked her to come in. And she unveiled some things about Haman. Haman then was 
he was taken care of. He was removed from his position. He himself was punished, executed. And Esther and the Jewish people, Mordecai, they were safe. The whole theme to this today is, is this really, this, this main point is that we're to encourage others to follow God's leadership, no matter the cost. There are people that we will mentor in our lives, people that are going through very difficult things, things that are hard, and we sometimes are put in their path for a purpose. God's placed us there to minister to them, to help them and guide them through the darkness that they're facing, through the struggles or the challenges of life, we are there. And often we have to stand in that gap. And that might mean risking our, our own life or our own situation to take a stand for the Lord. And um, that's what Esther did. She took a stand and God protected her. And God took care of the situation and protected his people. So when you're out there, there mentoring people, encouraging people, it's always great to encourage people to follow the Lord's leadership. But it's also a great idea to make sure that you do that and you share with them regardless of the cost. Because the Lord's way and His will is most important above all else. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, help them, help me, Father, to take this study. And, Lord, apply it to our hearts and our lives, Lord, to be a people that would go out and we would protect those uh, that need protecting, Lord, that we would encourage people to take, a, to take a stand for Christ regardless of the cost. Uh, realizing, Father, that for some that means giving your own life, uh, being willing to, to die for the cause of Christ, Lord, being willing to go through some difficult things for the cause of Christ. Lord, help us to realize that as long as we're on this planet, we're never going to find complete peace and joy and happiness as long as we're looking to things as Solomon said in Ecclesiastes under the sun, Father. Um, all is vanity, Lord. Help us to look above the sun and look to the Father and pour our hearts out to you, Lord, as our Savior. Forgive us where we fail, Lord. Use us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. I pray you have a great rest of your day. Uh, dig a little deeper in this study. There's so much to learn in uh, the study of Esther and how God used her to free his people. So God bless you. I hope you'll be in church on Sunday. Talk to you soon.